Minutes ago, uh, Pfizer and BioNTech said they plan to file uh, today for an emergency use authorization that could allow their vaccine to be used next month. I mean, this is record time. Your thoughts? Absolutely. So this will be important because we'll also see some of the additional data that hasn't been released yet in terms of safety, um, as well as the efficacy data that they've sent some press releases out on. Um, completely expected. Um, it'll be really important for us to go through the safety data to make sure that there are no signatures there of anything that could be of concern. Um, but certainly everything that's been uh, talked about from the Pfizer and, and the Moderna vaccine as well, up to date, has uh, been very positive and leaves me optimistic about this vaccine coming down the pipeline. Um, Dr. Pekosh, so you could see part of the population, the most vulnerable population, especially in the U.S., you know, being administered this vaccine by, I believe, mid to end December. How many people won't want to take it because they think it's too soon? Well, th this is now the critical issue. Many of my colleagues have been using the phrase, vaccines don't save lives, vaccinations save lives. And so the important thing now is to make sure that there's public confidence in this vaccine, uh, that it's safe as well as efficacious. Um, it's been, there's been a very fast pipeline to move this vaccine from um, a, a, an idea into something that's ready to be rolled out into the population. Um, many of the shortcuts, if I can use that term, um, have really suggested that um, uh, are just production shortcuts. So they're shortcuts that have allowed the companies to make large amounts of vaccines while they're doing their testing. Um, the safety and the efficacy have not been shortcut in any way. And we'll see that data today in the emergency use act, um, authorization statement that comes out. Andrew Pekosh, is there any debate in the scientific community about whether these new vaccines, these new vaccines, RNA, could actually alter your DNA longer term? Yeah, um, so far there's been no uh, reports of anything like that in terms of very long-term um, uh, um, uh, effects. But again, the vaccine has only been tested for a few months in humans. We do have a wealth of data from animal studies that suggest that those types of things aren't occurring um, in the animal models uh, that the vaccines have been tested in. Um, but it's an important point to emphasize. As the vaccine gets rolled out into this first group of individuals, and Francine, as you mentioned, it's most likely to be frontline healthcare workers, other medical staff, um, residents, uh, elderly residents of long-term care facilities and, and uh, residencies, um, those highly vulnerable populations. That first round of vaccinations will also come with it additional monitoring. Um, it's not like we'll forget about monitoring for safety and efficacy that's going to keep going during this first round of vaccinations where we're really going to try to target the most uh, at-risk people in the population. And the other good news about the vaccine trials is that both Moderna and Pfizer um, have data that suggests their vaccines are working well in the elderly. Um, and that can sometimes be a problem population for vaccinations. So lots of good signals from the preliminary data. It's really now about an effective yeah. vaccination campaign. Um, Andrew, if Pfizer and BioNTech are, are ready to file, does it mean that Moderna is also soon ready to file? And is Moderna, you know, easier to distribute because of the, the freezing temperatures has, you know, are, are A, actually not as high and you can keep it refrigerated for 30 days? Yeah, so Moderna and Pfizer are both the same types of vaccines. It seems that Moderna is sort of about two or three weeks behind Pfizer in terms of how they're moving through their clinical trial. Uh, I fully expect to see similar results uh, from Moderna. Uh, the cold chain issue is an important one. Um, even though these vaccines are the same types of vaccines, Moderna appears to have tested their storage of this vaccine at different temperatures, uh, some of which aren't as cold as the Pfizer vaccine uh, needs. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure the Pfizer vaccine, Pfizer company is now testing other storage capabilities for their vaccine. Um, they have set up freezer banks across the country, and many of the distribution companies like FedEx and DHL have set up freezer banks to try to aid in the distribution of the Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, the Moderna will be easier. Um, it has a longer 
uh, stability at cooler temperatures and at room temperature. So that vaccine will certainly be, um, at least right now, easier to, to, to distribute.